Heidi Kugler. I'm an ordained United Methodist minister, and I serve as the Chief of Chaplaincy Services for the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And in that role, I provide executive oversight to our 122 chaplaincy um, field departments, which are in federal prisons throughout the country. And my team and I work on national policy for chaplaincy services, training, and kind of professional development for the chaplains and support staff of those chaplaincy departments. I think the things that may be helpful for um, others that may be thinking about prison chaplaincy is at least in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, the qualifications to serve as a staff chaplain, which is a governmental service position at the GS-12 level. You can do some research on what that means exactly, but basically there are four basic requirements. One needs to have an earned bachelor's degree, an advanced theological graduate degree. They need to have a religious endorsement. Uh, they need to have professional ministry credentialing. And by that, we are looking for ordination, um, ministerial licensure, commissioning, or a documentation of professional ministry experience. Um, and that would have to, that other documentation would have to be received by an outside religious entity. And then we're also looking for two years of professional ministry experience and the vacancy announcements for individual institutional openings for chaplaincy positions are on a governmental website, www.usajobs.gov. So the first things that tend to surprise applicants um, are the many requirements that federal chaplaincy service uh, requires. It, it far exceeds the um, other kinds of correctional settings at times. And so one of the things that I've told others that may be interested, if they do not meet the qualifications for the Bureau, one of them that I forgot to mention earlier is that the standard um, age requirement for coming into federal service for federal law enforcement is applying before you're 37. So you have to apply by your 37 because there's 20 years of, of uh, federal law enforcement retirement that a person is eligible for and they have um, they have mandatory retirement at the age of 57. I think the biggest suggestion I would give to anybody is for you to learn more about correctional ministry. Um, to study, you know, to read some books, to connect up with current correctional chaplains, um, test it out to see if it's for you, see if there's an opportunity to volunteer or intern. Uh, my own journey to correctional chaplaincy, I had no intentions of, it was not my plan. I, I guess ultimately it was God's plan, but I, I had not planned when I went off to seminary to be a prison chaplain. Uh, it was really kind of the farthest thing from my mind. I think that's the biggest suggestion that I would give to anybody is, you know, test it out, learn more, see if there's some ways to go visit or again, volunteer, get a sense of um, what it really entails because it's more than, for instance, Shawshank Redemption or um, Dead Man Walking or some other movies or books that, you know, people may have heard about. You need to kind of have a sense of the fact that it is um, a law enforcement chaplaincy position and so you're you intersect both of those dynamics in terms of caring for the religious accommodations and pastoral needs of of inmates um, at first and foremost but then you've got crisis intervention to do with staff that is present and community engagement and involvement too so and again as i mentioned earlier the interfaith setting is is um i think a real gift uh for anybody that wants to think about serving as a chaplain, but it, that is also not for everyone either. So again, I think the best suggestion I would make is for you to consider um, learning more or volunteering or interning. So we have currently 252 chaplains working in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, and they are throughout the 122 institutions, federal prisons in the country, as well as several working in headquarters. So they are then work with me um, in the office, headquarters office. 
And um, it varies in terms of how many positions are available vacant in, in any given year. But I would say on average, the agency will hire anywhere between um, 30 and 60 chaplains in the course of a year. And we are hopeful of um, hiring more in time as well. Um, we just need to kind of, the institutional uh, settings do the vacancy announcement. So it depends on their staffing allotments at the at that particular institution, which comes down through the regional office and headquarters office based on, on both allocated staffing positions and funded ones um, through the Department of Justice that ultimately are done by Congress. So um, it depends, it varies a little bit. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, while this is a challenging setting to do ministry, it is also one for incredible blessings. Uh, the opportunity to lead out of your own faith tradition and accommodate others um, gives you the opportunity to learn from other people and really, I would say, expand your spiritual receptivity. The other thing I have often known about this work is that by the time inmates come into custody, persons come into custody, even in a um, detention setting, in a lot of ways they've already hit rock bottom. So the spiritual receptivity is very high and the opportunity to really enhance the um, spiritual awakening of people, both staff and inmates and community members is always present and so again i would urge you encourage you we were always looking for gifted uh, chaplains and others to serve with us in this uh, gift of a ministry thank you